Good evening or afternoon or morning everyone and welcome to the Toki Niandi Lesson 3 Genki 1 live stream. I hope you guys are having a great day or a great evening and I hope that my audio is on. Let's check. Genki 1 Lesson 3. This is what we're covering today. We have eight sections to cover today. The highlighted one in white is polite verb conjugation. That is going to be the main part of this lesson. It's the, it's the hardest part in the book. Probably the least complicated section in reality. I think it's pretty straightforward, and I'm going to show you why it's straightforward today. So section two is the present tense, which is basically what we just covered in section one, but a little bit more detail. Uh, we're going to be covering the particles o, de, ni, and e. We're going to be going over time references, how to reference time in particular. Polite invitations, frequency adverbs, and word order. And a little bit more about wa. If you're watching this on the replay, there's going to be timestamps to each section down in the comments and probably in the description as well. So you can just skip around to what you want to actually cover for the day. Let's go ahead and jump into the Japanese polite verb conjugation. The first advice I give everyone when we go into the lesson three lesson is that you just need to either ignore or rip out pages 86 and 87. I think in the second book, it's 88 and 89. You shouldn't actually rip them out because there's some important stuff on the back of those pages, but seriously, it's probably better if you just ignore them. Hopefully I can sort of explain why clearly today. The main reason is the way they teach you to memorize verbs. Now, what I say is that you should memorize dictionary forms first, but what the lesson three in the book suggests is that you should memorize verb conjugations as sets. So basically when you memorize a verb, you should memorize its dictionary form, its polite present tense, and its polite negative, and all these other conjugations. Well, let me just tell you that that is an extreme waste of time. Like it's just way too much work. It's too much memorization because in Japanese, when it comes to conjugation, there's some very simple rules that can be followed for every single verb. And if you learn those rules, you can conjugate literally any verb into the language into its present tense or whatever tense we're covering. Today we're covering the polite present tense and the polite negative. Another thing that the, the book sort of is, I think missing the mark on is that it has you memorize them as do and u verbs. I'm going to explain why that's a problem later, but I prefer to call them godan and ichidan verbs or just u verbs and idu and edu verbs. That's a little bit easier to understand and you'll see why a little bit later. The advice I give to everyone when they start memorizing conjugation, it's to memorize the dictionary form first. That's the form of the verb you're going to find in the dictionary. Memorize that first when you're learning new new uh, verb vocabulary. Then you're going to memorize the rules for conjugation based on the ending of the verb. So what does that mean? Well, all verbs in Japanese end with an U syllable. Not with the U character, but with the U syllable. Here are all the possible endings that a verb could have. U, Ku, Su, Tsu, Nu, Mu, Gu, bu and du. If a word in Japanese ends with one of these characters, it's probably a verb. So the way that you make the Japanese polite present tense is that you create the mas verb stem and then add masu, masu, and that's it. But I know you're probably going to ask, what is the verb stem, right? Well, I'm going to teach you how to make that. And that is the easiest thing to do. This, I believe, is the easiest conjugation in the Japanese language, and this book, these two pages, make it sound like it's some complicated magic. Now, the second edition is much worse than the third edition. The third edition is a little bit clearer, but the third edition still follows the same sort of premise of learn them as a duo new verbs and then memorize the mas, masen, like the present and the negative, along with the dictionary form, like memorize them together. And I don't think that is very efficient. So we're going to learn the, word, the rule to make the verb stem. First for godan verbs. This is what the book calls u verbs. So to make the verb stem for godan verbs, we need to take the u syllable and turn it into an e syllable. Now that does not mean to take the u character and turn it into an e character. It means to take the sound u and turn it into e. So what does that mean? Well, this is what it means. For an 
A verb that ends in u, we'd change it to e, so in that case, yes. For a verb that ends in ku, we'd change it to ki. For a verb that ends in su, we'd change it to shi. For a verb that ends in su, su, we'd change it to chi. A verb that ends in nu, we change that character to ni. A verb that ends in mu, we change it to mi. Gu becomes gi, bu becomes bi, and du becomes a bi. Now you'll see that right here, I have two little stars, and that's because du is the only character that is treated a little bit differently sometimes. And that's what the book calls du verbs. We're gonna call them ichidem verbs or idu and edu verbs. I also have a star here with su and shi. You notice that it doesn't become si. That's because there is no si character in Japanese. So su, to make it the e sound, becomes shi. This is incorrect. There should not be a star here. The star should be down here on chi. So tsu becomes chi because there's no t sound in Japanese. Okay, so let's see what that looks like in practice because just looking at this is a little bit confusing, I think. Let's look at some actual verbs. We're going to go back and look. Now that we have the verb stem, the mas verb stem, we know that we just have to add mas to whatever that is. So first go down verbs. Here's a list of verbs. We've got utau, which is an a verb that ends in u, and it means to sing. So we're gonna take that u character, change it to an e, and we now have the verb stem. That is our verb stem. Let's go ahead and get our furigana out here, right? The verb stem of utao is utai, and we add mas, utaimas, and we now have the polite present tense of utao. For a ku, a ku verb, we have kiku, which is to listen. To get the stem, we change ku to ki, and we have kiki, and that is the verb stem. Then all we have to do is add masu, and that is the present tense of kiku, which is to listen. Kikimas su, we know from the last page, su becomes shi. So for the verb hanasu, which means to speak, we change su to shi, and we get hanashi, that's our stem. All you have to do is add mas, hanashimas. Now this is true for all u, ku, su, verbs, and everything we're going to cover up until du. They're all going to be this way, every single time, without fail. I'll cover the very few exceptions a little bit later, but they're all going to be like this. So you just need to memorize this simple rule. Okay, so next we have matsu, which is to wait. Matsu, tsu becomes chi, so we get machi, that's the verb stem, and we add mas, and that's machi mas. Nu becomes ni, and our verb for that is to die, shinu, and that becomes shini, we add mas, shinimas, and that's it. Now, I want to mention one time, and I mention this all the time when I talk about shinu, that there are only two verbs that end in nu in the entire Japanese language. One is shinu, which means to die, and the other is inu. Now, inu also means dog, but the verb inu is also a very, very old Japanese word that also means to die, but it is not used in modern Japanese. Nobody uses it in conversation. Nobody uses it pretty much for anything. I think the last time it was used in popular culture was in the title of Gone with the Wind. They used the word inu. I don't remember what the full title was, but that's the last time I've ever heard of inu actually being used. Okay, so far, we've got a couple more verbs to go through. So, shinu becomes shini, shinimasu. Mu verbs, we change the mu, the u sound, to i, so it becomes mi. So no mu to drink becomes no mi, that's our stem. We add mas, no mi mas. Let's get those furigana up. Our gu verb is isogu, which is to hurry, isogu. That's, by the way, these are the dictionary forms on the left. To get the verb stem, the mas verb stem, we change gu to gi. Isogu becomes isogi, we add mas, isogimas, and that is our polite present tense. Bu becomes bi, so asobu, which is to play, becomes asobi masu. Asobi mas, that's the play, pre polite present tense. Noru, which means to get on, like to get on a train or to get on a bicycle. Du becomes, in most cases, di, which is the verb stem, nori. We add mas, nori mas, and that is the polite present tense, nori mas. So that's it. So you just take nomu. Change that u sound to an e sound. This is a good time when you, this is like one of the only good times to use romaji. I'll cover that a little bit later. Because you just change that last u sound to an e. You got the stem, add mas, you're good to go. That's it. So let's cover the hard part. 
sort of hard part. This is what mixes people up all the time where lots of people are going to make lots of mistakes if they don't know about these rules. And that is ichidan verbs, or as the book likes to call them, do verbs. Which is silly because as we just saw back here, there's some do verbs that are just normal, like all the other verbs. So ichidan verbs are verbs that end with iru or edu, with, as far as I know, 10 exceptions, but I think there may be some other exceptions out there as well. The verb that I'm first going to use for our example is taberu. Now, do verbs are the one time that I think it's worth writing out verbs in domaji, in Roman characters, because it's a little bit easier to understand iru and edu verbs, right? You can see here that taberu has three characters, ta, be, and du. So how is this an edu verb exactly? Well, if you write it out in English characters, we can see ta, be, du. Now that last e sound is where the edu part of the verb comes from, right? So that makes it an edu verb. So in this case, we know that it's going to be treated a little bit differently than normal du verbs, which if it was a norm normal du verb, you'd think it would be conjugated as taberimasu, but that is incorrect. It is not taberimasu because it is an iru or an edu verb. So let's see what happens. I've got, I've got good news. Some really good news, actually. It's really, really easy to make an ichidan verb into the polite present tense. All you have to do is cut the du and add mas. So for example, for midu, which is to look, we just cut the du, you get rid of it, and add mas, and it becomes mimas. For nedu, which is to sleep, you can hear it, nedu, n-e-r-u, nedu. So that's an edu verb, we just cut the du, add mas, ne mas. Okidu, which is to wake up or to get up, like in the morning or whatever. Ki, it ends with an e sound, right? So that makes it an idu verb. So all we have to do is cut the du and add mas. And we get okimas, which is to wake up in the polite present tense. And that's it. That's literally it. Now, there are 10 exceptions to the idu edu verb. Now, before I mention that, before I go over those, I just want to mention that with these rules in mind, what that means is that when you're conjugating verbs into their polite present or polite negative, you will know without fail that you're going to be changing that last character to its, like, its E counterpart. So if, if it ends in U, you're changing it to E. If it ends in Mu, you're changing it to Mi and adding Mas. The only time you're not going to be sure is if it ends in Du. So you need to be careful with Du verbs. If you look at a Du verb, you need to check the character before Du, just to see if it has an E or an E at the end of it. If it does, you know it's an Iduera verb. Unless it's one of these 10. So these are the 10 exceptions that I know about. In my previous Lesson 3 uh, live stream, I said that there were 8. But then uh, someone in the Discord, Asai, the person's name was Sai in the Discord, recognized two more. So I've added those to the lesson here. We've got Haidu, which is to enter. That is true. These are all treated, by the way, as normal do verbs back in the first section. Godan verbs. So Haidu becomes Haidimas. Hashidu. You'd think it's an idu verb, right? But it's an exception, so it becomes hashirimas. Iru, which is to need, becomes irimas. I don't really use that one much. Usually you just say iru, but anyway. Uh, kairu, which is to go home, becomes kairimas. That's an exception. Kagiru is another exception. It means to limit. Kagirimas, to limit. Kiru, which is to cut, becomes kirimas. It's an exception. Shaberu, which is also to speak, kind of like Hanasu, but depends on where you're at, and it's a little less formal, I'd say. Becomes hana, uh, shaberimasu. Shiru, which is to know, becomes shirimasu. Keru and suberu, which were the ones that were not in my last lessons. Those are to kick and to slide. They become kerimasu and suberimasu, respectively. So these are exceptions to the rule. All right, I'm going to jump into regular verbs, and then I'm going to stop for any questions or comments. See what I'm missing. So there are two irregular verbs in Japanese with one verb, iku, that is sometimes an exception. Today it's not. But anyway, the two irregulars, they're always irregular, regardless of the conjugation, are kuru and suru. Kuru is to come, suru is to do. So kuru doesn't follow any of the rules. You just need to memorize these two. It's kimas to come, and suru becomes shimas to do. 
And you just have to memorize those two. Unfortunately, there's no special rule for them. You just memorize that ku, ru becomes ki, mas, and suru becomes shimas. And those are our two irregulars. So I'm going to jump into Japanese polite present tense negative, which is almost exactly the same as the positive. So I'm going to fly through this. All right, guys. So all you need to make the negative, which is to say the opposite of a verb. So basically to say instead of go, the negative conjugation would be not go. Okay. So that's what the negative means. So for the negative, we take the mas verb stem again, same verb stem and just add Masen. Okay, so let's go over Godan verbs first. Utao becomes utaimasen. Kiku becomes kikimasen. Hanasu becomes hanashimasen. Matsu becomes machimasen. Shinu becomes shinimasen. Not die. Please don't die. Nomu becomes nomimasen. Isogu becomes isogimasen. Asobu becomes asobimasen. Noru becomes norimasen. So using the last example sentence, which I'll have lots of very soon, I promise, you could say, Densha ni norimasen. Not get on the train. For ichidan verbs, we have the same issue. We just cut the ru and add masen. It's exactly the same for the negative as it was for the positive. So for miru, we get cut the ru, mimasen. Neru, cut the ru, Nemasen, not sleep. That's what happened to me yesterday. Okiru, kataru, okimasen. Okay? And that's just for iru and eru verbs. Same deal as before. So the same exceptions exist for negative verbs. There are 10 exceptions. You unfortunately just need to memorize them. Most of them are pretty common, so you'll use them so much and make mistakes with them so much that you will get them down pretty quickly. So, for example, hairu becomes hairimasen. Hashiru becomes hashirimasen. Iru becomes irimasen. I don't need it. Kairu becomes kairimasen. Not go home. Kagiru becomes kagirimasen. There's not a limit. Kiru becomes kirimasen. Not cut. Shaberu. Shaberimasen. Not speak. Shiru. Shirimasen. I do not know. Keru. Kerimasen. Not kick. Suberu. Suberimasen. I'm not going to go, going to go down the slide. Suberi dai ni suberimasen. The same irregular verbs exist for the masen form. Kuru becomes kimasen. So it's the same deal. Ku becomes ki. Kuru becomes kimasen, not come. Suru becomes shimasen, not do. Okay? And that's it. That is how you conjugate verbs into their present polite tense and into their negative. And now we're going to go over some examples of these and how you can use them. Because knowing how to make the Japanese present tense is great, but that doesn't mean you've learned how to use it. So that's what we're going to go over now. Now we've just gone over how to make the present tense, and that is using the mas verb stem, adding mas for positive, and the mas verb stem plus masen for the negative. In reality, the Japanese present tense should be put in quotation marks, because what it actually is, is it's used to refer to habitual actions or future actions, whether those are just about to happen or off in the future. They're not used for ongoing actions, which I guess, well, the continuous is used for that in English as well. So I guess that's not so unique. But just keep in mind that the present tense actually means habitual actions and future actions. So let's go over some examples for that. In Japanese, unlike in many other languages, you can just say a verb and it can be a complete sentence. So for example, utaimasu. This means I will sing. Now, I have I in gray because the I here is implied. The full sentence would be watashi wa utaimasu or something like that. I will sing. But you don't need it. All you actually need to have a complete sentence in Japanese is utaimasu, one verb. I will sing. If someone questioned you and asked you, do you sing? Sometimes you could also respond with utaimasu, which would mean I, I sing from time to time. Yeah, I can sing. Nomimasen means I will not drink or I do not drink, depending on the context, alone. So if someone asks, hey, do you drink alcohol? Nomimasen. That means that habitually, I do not drink alcohol. Now, if someone gives you a drink and says, do you want to drink this? Nomimasen. I will not drink it. So it's future tense in reality, right? So, kairimasu. 
alone is I will go home now. I will go home. Kaerimasu. All right, so let's go over some full sentences because that's what we're all here for. That's what I'm here for, full sentences. We'll start with Kono uta wo utaimasu. I will sing this song. You remember Kono from Lesson 2. If you haven't watched Lesson 2 yet, you might want to go check that one out. It's probably up here or something. And that will teach you how to use Kono, which is specific this. Kono uta wo utaimasu. I will sing this song. So if you're at karaoke anytime, if you come to Japan and you don't go to karaoke, I will be shocked. Everyone goes to karaoke when they first get to Japan. It's like an initiation ritual. So if you're looking at the thing where you choose your songs, the little like, iPad-like thing, Kono uta wo utaimasu. I will sing this song. Ocha wo nomimasen. I will not drink tea. Or I do not drink tea. Once again, this is going to depend on the context because if someone is offering you tea right now, you can just say, Ocha wo nomimasen. I'm not going to drink tea. But it could also mean that you don't drink tea habitually. So in Japanese, context is very important. Uchi ni kairimasu. I will go home. Literally, it means I will go home to my house. Uchi is my house or my home. And the verb kairu is to go home. So I will go home to my house. Which is why we don't see anything green in the original sentence. Next, we're gonna jump into the conversation. So, our conversation, the very first one in today's lesson, is quite long. So, I'm gonna go through it slowly first. I'll be both characters, and then I will go through it at a normal pace, and then we'll go over it line by line in the following slides. All right, are you ready? Let's go. Nani o tabemasu ka? うーん、ハンバーグセットを食べます。じゃあ、僕はオムライスを食べます。コーヒーも飲みませんかコーヒーは飲みません。はい、わかりました。はい、レッツゴーツゥーザライフ。フルスピード。ポテンシャルだっす
Otherwise, I'd have to give a full explanation, which I did anyway. Anyway, the next sentence was, Kohi mo nomimasen ka? All right, now this one is a bit of a doozy. Now, we see we have nomimasen ka. And you'll notice in the English translation, this is, won't you drink coffee too? Now, we're going to be covering nomimasen ka, which is basically negative plus ka, which is a polite invitation a little bit later in the lesson. So stick around for that if you want to learn more about it. So this question is, kohi mo nomimasen ka, instead of kohi wa or kohi wo. Now, that's because I've already said as A that I'm going to have om rice. So the person B is asking if I will also have coffee. So this mo is... Also, we covered that in the last lesson, I think, but just so you know, that's what's going on here. Even though I'm not drinking anything, I've already decided that I'm having om rice, so I need the person's asking me if I will also have coffee. Won't you have coffee too? Kohi wa nomimasen. I'm not drinking coffee, or I don't drink coffee. It could be translated either way. Depends on the context. In this situation, I'd probably say. No, I'm not going to drink coffee right now. But some people might say it as, I don't drink coffee at all. Hai, wakarimashita. So, wakarimashita is an important phrase. It has not been taught in the Genki book yet, but you might as well learn it right now. Wakarimashita is the past tense conjugation of the verb wakaru, which means to understand. Wakarimashita means you have understood what has been said to you. So, it can be translated as, got it. Gotcha. I understand, understood, something like that. And it's a very important phrase or verb, really. So you should learn wakarimashita or wakatta is the impolite, mm, informal version of it. Wakarimashita, I understand. So let's go ahead and jump into particles. Wo, de, ni, and e. The first one we're going to cover is wo, which, as Karl Meyer Flor just mentioned, marks direct objects. Gonna do some formula stuff here. Basically, direct object, dab, wo, verb. So we take our direct object, dab, we add wo, and a verb. Let's see how that works. For example, just like we were just talking about, kohi wo nomimasu. I will drink coffee. Kohi wo nomimasu, or I do drink coffee. Terebi wo mimasu. I will watch TV, or I do watch TV. Terebi wo mimasu. So I will watch Televi or I Televi. I, I will watch television or I do watch television. And that's it. It just marks the direct object. That's all. We'll have we'll have uh, practice sentences later in the chapter. De marks where an activity takes place. Not all the time, but the first thing we learn in Genki, sorry about my fan, is that de marks where an activity takes place. So let's see what that looks like. Basically, we take a location. We add de, and then the verb. For example, we have, we're going to use the same sentences as before. Ie de kohi, kohi wo nomimasu. So I will drink coffee at home, or I do drink coffee at home. Ie de kohi wo nomimasu. So this de is marking the location at which drinking of coffee takes place. It can be translated sort of as an at. The next sentence, we could add ba de terebi wo mimasu. So I will watch TV at a bar or I do watch TV at the bar. Anyway, we've got the location. De basically can be translated as at. It marks where we're doing it. Terebi wo mimasu. We do watching of television. The next particle is ni. Now, ni is a fun one. It can be used in so many ways, but the two ways we're going to be covering today are marks the time an activity takes place. It can mark the time something happens. Or it can be, it can mark movement towards a goal, movement towards something, physical movement. Not always physical, but mostly physical movement. So for time, we have a time, which is going to be in black and light blue today, and ni, and then a verb. Or if we're talking about moving towards a goal, we have a location, plus ni, plus a verb of movement which you'll see what I'm talking about momentarily. So these sentences, we're using the same sentences as before, and they're just getting longer and longer. So our first sentences are going to be using time. Shichiji ni ie de kohi wo nomimasu. So we just took the original kohi wo nomimasu and used some particles to make it a more complicated sentence. I will or do drink coffee at home at 7 o'clock. Shichiji ni ie de 
コーヒーを飲みます。So our next sentence is 日曜日にバーでテレビを見ます。This time we've added Sunday. 日曜日にバーでテレビを見ます。This means I will or do watch television at a bar on Sunday. So in this case, ni is marking the time that something takes place. Now, using locations, movement towards something, we have America ni kairimas. I will go home to America. America ni kairimas. Now, kairu, remember I said that ni, the directional, takes a verb of movement. And to go home, kairu is a verb of movement. So that's one that can take ni. America ni kairimas. Cafe ni. Ikimas, cafe is a cafe, and iku, iku, ikimas is a verb of movement. It's literally the verb of movement. It means to go. So I will go to a cafe. I forgot to put a there. Cafe ni ikimas. I will go to the cafe. Our next particle is e. Now, e also marks movement towards a goal, and it is identical to ni. It is used in exactly the same way as the movement version of ni. We had a conversation on Discord about this the other day over what the difference is in reality. And what it comes down to is sort of preference, personal preference. They can be used the same way. There's some situations where A is more commonly used, but for the most part, you just sort of get a feel for it and use the one you like the most.、Uh, younger people tend to use ni in place of E, whereas older people, obviously, are the opposite, tend to use. E、instead of ni when talking about going somewhere. But otherwise, they're exactly the same. There's no rule of when you should use one over the other. You use it the same way location plus e plus a movement verb. So we're going to use the same sentences. America e kairimas. Cafe not ni. Cafe ni. No. Cafe e ikimas. It's so hard for me to say that because I would always say cafe ni ikimas. But you could say, cafe e ikimas. But it's harder to say, in my opinion. It's much easier to say, cafe ni ikimas. And both are fine. So I'm always going to go with the easier one. Cafe ni ikimas. But cafe e ikimas is also fine. So now I'm going to jump into sentences as soon as I fix my stupid camera. Daishu Amerika ni kairimas. Eh, watashi mo jugatsu ni Amerika e ikimas. アメリカで何をしますかピザをたくさん食べます。Alright, let's go through that at full speed. 来週アメリカに帰ります。えー、私も10月にアメリカへ行きます。アメリカで何をしますかピザをたくさん食べます。Alright, so let's go over that line by line. 来週アメリカに帰ります。So this one means next week I will go home to America. Now, one thing that is covered in the book is time, references to time, and we're going over that next. That's the next section. You'll notice I didn't use ni along with daishu, and that's because daishu is one of the types of words that you do not use ni with. In fact, you cannot use ni with it. So that's going to be in the next section. I'll explain that a little more there, so stick around for that. So, Daishu America ni kairimas means next week I will go home to, excuse me, America. Eh? Watashi mo jugatsu ni America e kairimas. Now, notice I have ni and e here. Now, this ni is in reference to time, which is jugatsu or October. This e is in reference to going to America. America e ikimas, right? Now, I did this on purpose, but you could just as well say, E, watashi mo jugatsu ni Amerika ni ikimas. That would be perfectly fine. Keep that in mind. Oh, I, watashi, will also go to America in October. That also is mo in October. This E is like a, E, really? Really? I'm going to do that too type of thing. Or, Oh, I'll also go to America. Sort of a pleasant surprise. I'm also doing that. アメリカで何をしますか This is just a simple、uh, question sentence. アメリカで What are you going to do in America? So this で could be translated usually as at or in. It means what, nani? What are you going to do? And we covered で is、uh, it, 
it marks a location where something is done. In this case, we're asking, what will be done in America? What will you do in America? America de nani o shimasu ka? Pizza wo takusan tabemasu. Takusan means lots of, and that's a verb of frequency, which I believe we cover in part six of this lesson. So stick around for that. Pizza wo takusan tabemasu. All right. So we're going to be moving on now to referencing time in Japanese. So to reference time in Japanese for days of the week and for numerical time expressions like shichiji or nanaji, if you want to sound like a really, really older Japanese man, you need to use ni, the ni particle after them. For example, uh, we take the time plus ni plus a verb. So we'll use our examples from earlier. Shichiji ni. Kohi wo nomimasu. We need to have that ni if we're using time. You can't say shichiji kohi wo nomimasu. Doesn't sound, doesn't sound right. This is one of those cases where you cannot drop the particle. You must keep it there. Shichiji ni kohi wo nomimasu. For days of the week, we also use the ni particle. Nichiyobi ni terebi wo mimasu. I will or do watch TV on Sunday. Nichiyobi ni terebi wo mimasu. For words like today, tomorrow, etc., or for regular intervals like every day, or for when, we do not use ni. In fact, you cannot use ni. For today, kyo, tomorrow, ashita, regular intervals, every day, mainichi, or when, itsu, no ni. So we have mainichi kohi wo nomimasu. We drink coffee. I will drink coffee. Every day, or I do drink coffee every day. Mainichi kohi wo nomimasu. So notice we don't have a ni particle. It doesn't take a ni particle. The next one is kyo wa terebi wo mimasu. We could also say kyo terebi wo mimasu. But often people say kyo wa terebi wo mimasu. Today is, we'll cover that wa. That's the wa we actually cover at the end of the lesson. But it doesn't take ni. For times of day, like morning or evening, asa, Gogo, stuff like that. Or for the weekend, shumatsu, you can use ni, but you don't have to. It's optional. Ni will make it more forceful, more emphasized. So, time si plus ni plus verb, but the ni is optional. So, asa ni kohi wo nomimasu. I will drink coffee in the morning. That ni is completely optional. You could even say, you could also say, asa kohi wo nomimasu. Hmm. But that ni emphasizes more when you're doing it than the actual activity. Asa ni kohi wo nomimasu. I drink coffee in the morning. If you just said asa kohi wo nomimasu, I drink coffee in the morning, like it's more emphasizing the, uh, the what you do. The next sentence is shumatsu terebi wo mimasu. I will watch TV over the weekend. You could also say shumatsu ni terebi wo mimasu. That would be fine as well. But it's emphasizing when you're going to do something. So let's go over our conversational piece for this. Asa nani wo shimasu ka? Asa ni gohan wo tabemasu. Mainichi nanji ni tabemasu ka? Hachiji ni tabemasu. Itsu shigoto ni ikimasu ka? Shigoto ni ikimasen. All right, let's read that a little bit faster. Asa nani wo shimasu ka? Asa, ah, asa ni gohan wo tabemasu. 毎日何時に食べますか?8時に食べます。いつ仕事に行きますか?仕事に行きません。Alright, let's go over that one by one. I see bananas are flying. Okay, so the first sentence was, 朝何をしますか? What do you do in the morning? Notice we don't have a knee particle. You could if you wanted to. 朝にご飯を食べます。in the morning, specifically, I eat breakfast. Mainichi nanji ni tabemasu ka? What do you eat every day? So that ni can be translated as at. So it's kind of a weird, weird English sentence. What time do you eat at every day? Uh, I guess that's not that weird. Mainichi nanji ni tabemasu ka? I should have, there we go. What time do you eat at every day? Notice there's no ni bar, mar, particle. For terms like mainichi every day, we do not use ni. Nanji, what time we do use ni for? Nanji ni tabemasu ka? In place of that na, nani, that nan, would be a number. So nanji ni tabemasu ka? We do need ni then. Hachiji ni tabemasu. So for a specific time, we need 
the knee particle. Hachiji ni tabemasu. Alright, our next sentence is Itsu shigoto ni ikimasu ka? When do you go to work? Shigoto is work. Ikimasu ka is, of course, the verb to go. So, itsu, we do not use the ni particle with itsu. Itsu shigoto ni ikimasu ka? When do you go to work? Shigoto ni ikimasen. I don't go to work. For those of you who are wondering, B in this sentence is Ando san in the Patreon listening and shadowing practice. He's the one that does number B. He does not go to work. Ando san. Just so you're aware. All right. And that brings us to polite invitations in Japanese. This is going to be one of the more useful sections in the lesson. All right. So, polite invitations in Japanese. This is where we're going to start using masen, which is the negative conjugation of any verb. Polite invitations use something called masenka, which is to build that, we take the mas verb stem, we add masen, so it's basically the negative polite conjugation, and we add ka, the question particle. And that means, won't you do something? A verb, basically. Won't you? So it's a polite invitation. Some very simple examples are, utaimasenka, won't you sing? Nomimasenka, won't you drink? Kairimasenka, won't you go home? I, I imagine this was the order of what happened that night. Won't you sing? Person probably said no. Won't you drink? They drank. And won't you go home? You should probably go home now, buddy. <laughs> All right. So some longer sentences using our sentences from earlier, but turning them into invitations. We get Kono uta wo utaimasenka. Won't you sing this song? We covered Kono in lesson two. If you don't know how that works, I'll put a link down in the description probably, and you can go check that out. Ocha wo nomimasen ka? Won't you drink tea? Ie ni kairimasen ka? Won't you go home? Literally, it translates to won't you go home to your house. Ie is your house. Um, but kairu means to go home. So it's a little bit repetitive. You could just say kairimasen ka? Won't you go home? And that's perfectly fine. Adding ie at the beginning of the sentence is it's a little bit repetitive when using the verb kairimas. So let's jump into our conversation piece for this section. So I'm going to read it slow first and then speed up for the second time around. Ashita issho ni benkyo shimasen ka? Ii desu yo. Arigato gozaimasu. Sono ato eiga wo mimasen ka? Ii desu ne. All right, let's go a little bit faster. 明日一緒に勉強しませんか? いいですよ。ありがとうございます。その後、映画を見ませんか? いいですね。Okay, let's go over that line by line. So, 明日一緒に勉強しませんか? Won't you study with me tomorrow? Now, 一緒に is something that does not show up yet in Genki. But it's a very important word that you're going to hear all the time. So I've gone, ahead, I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of throwing it in here. It basically means with me, together. So won't you study with me tomorrow? 明日勉強しませんか? If you just said that, it, it is an invitation. So you don't need 一緒に. It would still sort of imply, probably contextually, that you wanted them to study with you. But it could also mean, won't you study tomorrow? Aren't you going to study tomorrow? But adding isho ni really puts the emphasis on you want them to study with you. So the next sentence is i desu yo. This is basically a set phrase which means sure. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much. Pretty straightforward. Sono ato eiga wo mimasen ka? After that, want to watch a movie? So, sono ato I've Highlighted sort of as a time word here. It's not in Genki yet, but it's it's pretty useful, I think. It means after that. So sono means that, a specific that. Ato means after. So sono ato eiga wo mimasen ka? After we've finished studying, basically. I desu ne. I desu ne is basically a set phrase that means sounds good. So frequency adverbs in Japanese. Frequency adverbs. We have mainichi, every day. Yoku often, and tokidoki, sometimes. These are the ones covered in Genki in lesson three. My favorite of these is tokidoki. I really love the sound of that. It was one of my favorite words when I first started speaking Japanese. So this looks messy, right? But it's pretty simple. So this is how it works. We've got an adverb of frequency. That's why I have the F in here, making it look a little algebraic. 
an adverb of frequency, plus a direct object, plus wo, plus a verb. We could also have a direct object plus o plus the adverb of frequency plus the verb, or we could just have an adverb of frequency plus a verb. It doesn't matter. You can put it anywhere in the sentence. That's what I wanted to point out with this. It looks confusing, but what it means is the adverb of frequency, like tokidoki, can go anywhere. So let's go ahead and go over a couple sentences to illustrate that. Mainichi kohi wo nomimasu ka? Do you drink coffee every day? Mainichi kohi wo nomimasu ka? Some answers to that could be Tokidoki ko oh oh oh. Tokidoki kohi wo nomimasu. I drink coffee sometimes. So we could have Tokidoki at the beginning of the sentence or like this one. Kohi wo yoku nomimasu. I drink coffee often. You could put it later in the sentence. So you could also say, yoku kohi wo nomimasu, but you could also put it over here. Kohi wo yoku nomimasu. I feel like yoku is more common before a verb than it is before the direct object, but maybe that's just how I like to say it. All right, so these are negative verbs of frequency. They're a little bit different. We've got zenzen, which means never, and amari, which means not often. Now, the difference with this one is that they must be used with negative verb conjugations. So we've got the same thing where they can go anywhere in the sentence. They can go before a direct object, they could go before the verb, they could just be alone with the verb, but they must be combined with negative conjugations. So in our case, we've only learned the polite negative, which is mainichi kohi wo nomimasu ka? Some answers to that could be zenzen nomimasen. I never drink coffee. You can't say zenzen nomimasu. I, because it's never, right? Now, Japanese people do say they do use zenzen with positive verbs. They do it, but it's grammatically incorrect. Like, even Japanese people make this mistake. They say, like, something like zenzen daijoubu, which means I'm perfectly fine, but it's actually grammatically incorrect. To say zenzen daijoubu because daijoubu is a positive, right? But anyway, just know it needs to be combined with a negative verb. Using amari, we could say kohi wo amari nomimasen. Once again, this one also has to be with a negative conjugation. So nomimasen, amari nomimasen. I don't drink coffee too often. That's a lie. I drink it all the time. You could also put amari at the beginning. Amari kohi wo nomimasen. Either way is fine. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our. Conversation. Osake wa nomimasu ka? Amari nomimasen. A san wa? Mmm. Toki doki nomimasu. Uso desu ne. Ehe. Ma. Yoku nomimasu ne. Mainichi nomimasu ne. Just in case you're wondering, B in this、uh, little skit is Ando san. No, wait, I'm sorry. A is Ando san in the Patreon listening and shadowing videos. Let's go through that a little bit faster. Osake wa nomimasu ka? Amari nomimasen. A san wa? Mmm, toki doki nomimasu. Uso desu ne. Ehe, ma, yoku nomimasu ne. Mainichi nomimasu ne. A is angry at this point in the conversation, I imagine. Alright, l so let's go over that one by one. Osake wa nomimasu ka? Do you drink alcohol? Now, in America, sake is basically Japanese wine, right? We refer to Japanese wine in the United States or in, the West, in Western countries as sake, but that's not completely accurate. Sake in America, what they call that in Japan is nihonshu, which is basically Japanese wine, right? Nihonshu. Osake can also refer to sake, nihonshu. But osake also refers to any type of alcohol, any type. So, in this situation, when someone says osake wa nomimasu ka, they're saying, or they could say osake wo nomimasu ka, it could be, it would mean, do you drink alcohol in general? That's what it means. If someone wanted to ask you if you drink like what we call sake in the United States, they would ask you, nihonshu wo nomimasu ka, or nihonshu wa nomimasu ka, do you drink sake? Right? So that's the difference there. It's a little bit confusing. It was confusing for me at first. 
。じゃあ、the next sentence あん。あんまり飲みません。A さんはあんまり飲みません。means I don't drink much. Do you? A さんは Generally, you use people's names if you know them when you're asking questions like this. Like, do you? You wouldn't say あなたは if you know their name. You would say their name. A さんは Just keep that in mind. Try not to use a nata too often. Mm, I drink it sometimes, says A. Then C comes in and says, Uso desu ne. <laughs> That's a lie, eh? I'm using E in the Canadian way. Ne. Uso desu ne. That's a lie. Uso is. Uso is. It's a noun that means a lie. But when you say Uso desu, that means that the per- thing that someone said is a lie. Ehe, ma, yoku no mi masu ne. <laughs> well, I guess I drink a lot. The I guess is sort of confirming that what the previous person said may be true. And that's what this ne is implying. It's implying that the thing that the person said before was true. You'll often see this when someone is confirming a phone number back to you. So if you say my number is ichi 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 this, then when someone reads it back to you, they'll confirm it. By saying, ichi ichi ichi, ichi 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 desu ne? So that's sort of a confirmation that what you said is true. Mainichi nomimasu ne? Yeah. You drink every day, is what this character is saying. You drink every day. And that ne is sort of a sarcastic, yeah, okay. Yeah, you drink every day. Word order in Japanese. All right, let's go ahead and jump into. The next section. Word order in Japanese. So, in English, this is a fun one. English is traditionally presented as SVO language subject, verb, object. The cat, the subject, will eat the verb, future tense, the mouse. That's the object. The cat will eat the mouse. Japanese is traditionally presented as a subject, object, verb language. Neko wa nezumi wo. Tabemasu. Neko wa nezumi o. Nezumi. Nezumi wo tabemasu. Right? So it's presented as a subject object verb language. But that's not entirely accurate. These sentences are all perfectly acceptable in Japanese. First, we have subject object verb. Neko wa nezumi wo tabemasu. But this sentence is also a full sentence in Japanese. Nezumi wo tabemasu. That's just object verb. But it's a full sentence. We could also mix those up with a comma, verb, object. This is also a perfectly fine sentence. Tabemasu, nezumi o. Perfectly fine. We could also just say, tabemasu, just the verb. And that's it. That's a, that's a complete sentence. In English, imagine if someone just said, eat or will eat. <laughs> She's cracking up over here. That's not a complete sentence. It doesn't work. What are you going to eat, mister? Who's going to eat? What are you talking about? But in Japanese, context is important. And just a verb, perfectly fine. It's grammatically correct. Tabemasu. Yes, so you cannot, you can just say a verb on its own, and it's a perfectly good sentence, unlike in English. Eat! <laughs> Can't say that. All right, so let's go over a conversation which illustrates this point. Kyo wa. 何をしますか寝る。えそれだけですかふーん。食べる。そして、見る。あの映画を。Let's go a little bit faster. 今日は何をしますか寝る。えそれだけですかうーん。食べるそして<gasps> 見るあの映画を In case you're wondering, B is Ando san. Let's go over these line by line. 今日は何をしますか This is a very polite What will you do today? And the answer is a resound, a just dictionary form verb. 寝る The English would be if Yuki said to me, What will you do today? I will say, Sleep. I guess as a response, that's not necessarily incorrect in English, but sleep. Neru. Eh? Huh? Sore dake desu ka? Dake means only. Dake is a very useful word that means only. You can use it 
just like you use only in English. So, sore, that, only, desu ka? Sore dake desu ka? Taberu. I'll eat. So, just the verb. Dictionary firm alone. Taberu implies that I will eat. And that's perfectly okay. Perfectly good grammar. Soshite. Soshite is an excellent、uh, conjunction junction. What's your function? It's an excellent conjunction. It means and then. You can also use it like to continue your sentence as a conjunction. And then I did something, something. Kohi o nomimashita. Soshite asa gohan wo tabemashita. Right? So I. Ate, drank coffee, and then I ate breakfast. Miru ano ega o. I'll watch it. That movie. You, that, that, that sounds weird in English, right? But it's perfectly fine in Japanese. You, you're throwing the verb out first. <gasps> Miru, watch. Ano ega o. The actual literal translation of this sentence would be watch that movie. <laughs> Which is, what's this guy doing? But basically, that is perfectly okay. More about wa. Wa is not the subject marker. It is not the subject marker. Ga is the subject marker, by the way, but wa is not it. Wa marks the main topic of a sentence. For example, Kyo wa isogashi. The topic is today. What we're talking about is today. Are you busy today? Kyo wa isogashi. Kyo isn't the subject. It's the topic of the sentence. What are you busy today? Gohan wa. This is a very useful sentence. You'll, you'll hear it all the time. It means, how about some food? But it's really just food. Food? Food? Dude. Basically. So, the topic is food. And it implies a longer sentence. What it implies is, Gohan wa tabemasu ka?、Uh, but the topic is food. So, some more full sentences would be, Kyo wa keiki o tabemasu. Tabemasu. Oh, I don't have the coloring here. I'm very sorry. Today, pink, I will eat cake. Kyo wa keiki o tabemasu. So, notice we have the direct object here. And the topic of the sentence is today. Today, I'm going to do this. The main part of this is that I'm going to eat cake today. Shumatsu wa terebi o mimasu. So, the topic here is what I'm going to be doing over the weekend. The weekend is the important part here. In English, we would use emphasis to sort of like emphasis on the word. This weekend, I'm going to watch TV. This weekend, I'm going to do that. So, like we would use emphasis to sort of present the topic of the sentence. But in Japanese, we use the wa particle. Shumatsu is the topic. Shumatsu wa terebi o mimasu. We're talking about the weekend. I hope you guys had a good weekend. I don't know if. Weekend means anything anymore considering the way the world is, but ah、oh、well. So let's go over some conversational pieces to sort of illustrate wa being used not as a subject marker, which it can be. Sometimes the topic of a sentence is the subject, right? Like in the case of watashi wa gohan mo tabemasu. In that situation, watashi is the topic and the subject. I'm the subject of the sentence, what I'm gonna do, but not always. And that's what we're covering right now. So we're gonna go over the conversation now. ご飯は食べます。ラーメンはどうですかうーん、今日はラーメンを食べません。あれ食べません。え寿司はうん、寿司は食べます。Let's read that at a full speed because that was a little awkward. ご飯は食べます。ラーメンはどうですかんーのラーメンを。Look at this. We don't have any subjects, objects, nothing. It's just literally a noun with a particle and a verb. And we just had a conversation in Japanese. It's wonderful. Tabemasu. I'll eat. Ramen wa 
どうですか How about ramen? Or how is ramen? I, I translate it as how is because we have this des, so it made it a little bit easier to explain. But a better English translation would be how about ramen? どうですか means how about something something or how is something something. 最近はどうですか How have you been, for example? Or ramen はどうですか How is ramen? How about ramen? Mmm. Ramen wo tabemasen. So, kyo, today, is now the topic of the sentence. Today, I'm not gonna eat ramen. It doesn't mean that I don't eat ramen. Like, I don't eat ramen. It means that today is the topic. Today, specifically, I don't wanna eat ramen. I'm not gonna eat ramen. Not, I don't want to. It means I'm not going to. Tabemasen. Finally, eh? A surprise, huh? This guy must really like ramen. Sushi wa? The new topic is sushi. And this sentence implies sushi wa tabemasu ka? Mm, sushi wa tabemasu. If we're talking about sushi, which would be the sort of literal translation of this wa, if it's sushi we're talking about, I'll eat it. So you can kind of translate the topic particle wa as if it's something we're talking about, or if we're talking about this, then yes. Sushi wa tabemasu. If we're talking about sushi, I will eat it. The question today is, Kyo wa nani o tabemasu ka? What will you eat today? An example of this, an answer to that sentence would be, Tamago o tabemasu. I'll eat eggs. I did eat eggs today. I ate boiled eggs. Tamago o tabemasu. So this will give you a chance to use the o particle to listen to the question of, Kyo wa nani o tabemasu ka? And to, to conjugate the verb tabemasu. So this is how you do it. 今日は何を食べますか And you'll answer with まるまるを食べます日本語勉強したいのか俺と同じ風に日本語を喋れるようになりたいのかこの本持ってるのか Then we're here to help えそうなの俺は無理って言おうと思った。On the Tokini Andy Patreon, we have Listening and Shadowing Practice, Genki Vocabulary Practice, Genki Textbook Practice where Yuki, Ando, and I are your partners. Eventually, even Workbook Practice. え、そうなの給料出る確かに。Uh, yeah, sure. 給料出るんだ。After Genki 1, we'll be covering Genki 2, and eventually even intermediate textbooks. Detailed grammar lessons and Japanese Q&As will, as always, be on the YouTube for free. Tokini Andy Patreon, live right now. よろしくね。よろしくお願いします。Do you like my thumbnail? I'm hoping that people hate it so much that they'll try to punch it with their mouse and accidentally click and then learn something. 